Hello, I'm Vinay Gupta, the Hexior Project. Uh, this is a small video about the current status of the project and about the design for the folding hexior, which is, I think, one of the next big developmental steps we're going to take here. Um, so let's start with the current status. Uh, I'm in Iceland. Uh, I spent 12 years in America, uh, a good chunk of that off and on working on things associated with the Department of Defense, Air Force flight simulators, winning the island game. Um, but I had persistent visa problems and was asked to leave uh, January of 2007. Uh, so I'm currently in Iceland. Uh, Iceland has turned out to be a wonderful place to live. Um, very friendly people. Uh, everybody speaks English, which is good because I'm not terribly good with languages. And uh, a very, very interesting sort of long-term decision-making practice by the government. They've gotten a lot of stuff right here. Um, they went to geothermal energy in, I want to say, in the early 1950s, late 1940s, and about 95% of the population is covered by an insulated pipe infrastructure where water comes out of the ground at you know, 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and they cool it down to something like 80 Celsius for circulation around the pipe infrastructure. Um, very, very smart system. Um, they also chose not to tax computing equipment in about 1981, 1982, which is, if you think about the state of computers at that time, extremely far-sighted. So um, I'm here talking to uh, various people about various things, um, and uh, potentially uh, there might be some tie-ups with the Icelandic Civil Defence Department, and um, there's a search and rescue team which is extremely enthusiastic, so we'll see what happens. So let's talk about this folding business. Um, conventionally, and from the videos, you can see that hex yurts are dealt with panel by panel. You have your 4x8 sheet, you take them out into the field, you sometimes cut them on site, and then you tape the thing together. Um, that's a very simple kind of low-tech approach, it works very well. Um, but there's one thing which is extremely difficult, which is when you have two panels that meet at 60 degrees, you're left with a gap. You can see, you know, if this is one inch and this is one inch, at the top you have a one inch gap. and that's okay given that you're using six inch wide tape, but it's not very structurally satisfying. Um, I have not had numbers run to figure out exactly how much that weakens the structure, but there's definitely some weakening and there's definitely uh, some leaking of heat, which is probably the larger factor. So the ideal is that you would precisely machine uh, 60 degree, uh, well, 30 degree angles on each piece of board so that you would get a precise fit at the edges. And this is diagrammed uh, and discussed in the six foot stretch hex your assembly video. So that's really a job for a factor. You need table saws with angle cutters, you know, mounted in place where you just run the boards right on through. Um, you also need some way of handling the fiberglass because you know these dow products are just loaded with fiberglass and we haven't found a better alternative yet. Um, so at that point, um, if you're going to do this whole factory cutting business, you might as well finish the job and pre-tape the building together at the factory, and then when you pull the thing out into the field, it can come as a single package. Um, this is a scale model, one foot to one inch, of uh, a standard eight foot hex a year, as it would come in a single sort of prefab package. So the package is not small, uh, eight feet by 12 feet, by uh, would be six inches um, and uh, there are some additional cuts that need to be made if you're going to do this which you'll see when we open this thing up so here is the assembly process boom there's your building so you can see it folds into a single piece there are two seams that would need to be fastened after the building is put together both are four foot long one on either side uh, the entire roof cone, which is where you've got your primary concerns about things like leakage, is a single piece. There are no open seams in the roof cone. Um, and there are two walls which are complete 4x8 sheets, which I think is probably where you would thing, uh, put things like the windows. And then these side walls, you have four side walls, which are actually a 4x8 with a seam down. So let's go through that a little more slowly. Um, it's a little hard to get the folding back up correct because you're doing this kind of concertina action. Uh, I don't think this is something you're going to do in the field terribly often with the building in a vertical orientation. I think what you're actually going to do is flop the building onto its side and then push the pieces backwards and forwards until it goes flat again. So 
You take the building. My guess is in the field you're going to stand the thing up and then have a team just kind of pull. And you'll have people at the sides pulling out also and you're just going to kind of ease the thing out. Um, probably you would have people inside pushing. Just kind of sneak underneath the edge and boom, there's your building. Now, um, let's talk about manufacturability for these. So you have your panels. You're going to cut the angles precisely. There are two kinds of seams going on here. There are in seams and out seams. For example, this point here goes in. This point here is an out seam. It pushes out. So you have two different kinds of seam. Um, from the prototyping that I did in Chicago, it looks like that actually works fairly well. What you have is your, your angle cut pieces. Sometimes you're taping on the inside of the angle. Sometimes you're taping on the outside. But it still works very nicely. And then when the building actually opens out, what you find is that because of the way the tape interacts with the angles, the building actually locks into place. So the pieces will open out to flat, but no further for these uh, for these seams. And it will open out to 60 degrees, but no further for these ones. This is a little tricky to explain without a detailed model of the angled pieces, but it's fairly apparent if you actually you know do some angle cutting and have a prototype, and maybe we'll get around to doing that on video later. Um, I actually have some stills that I think might be useful, and I'll try and put those online later today. Um, so then we get into the question of the durability of the seams. Um, my guess is that it's going to be hard to make seams of this form uh, extremely durable, particularly if you're going to be opening and closing and opening and closing and opening and closing the building. So I think that this is going to be one of these things where the seams are expected to last for three months, six months, a year, two years, um, and if the building is going to be there for a long time, you then retape the seams with another layer which will actually waterproof them um, more effectively. Because I think that you're, there's going to be a trade-off between flexibility and durability. Like foil tape, which is essentially going to last as long as metal will last exposed, um, down these seams is not going to survive fold and refold and fold and refold. So um, I think that what we're going to see is some kind of taping kit where you've got a sort of, you know, 14 foot long pole that you has a tape spool attached to it and some kind of remote cutter and then you just use that to very quickly drag tape down the seams if these buildings were going to be um, permanently installed somewhere. Um, now let's see, other folding mechanisms. The si uh, six foot stretch hex here, the one that is longer, uh, has a different folding mechanism. The ends kind of pop in and then the sides fold up. So one of those will fold up into a single four by eight package. Uh, four by eight by eight inches, and that's quite a nice design. I don't have a model of that here now. Again, if you're interested, send me an email and I'll make a video. Um, but it's not hard if you make a cardboard model, cut the two end seams which correspond to here. So you've got this on either end of the building, and you'll see how the folding mechanism works. Um, in terms of commercial possibilities, I think it's fairly obvious that a building like this, you know, that you can pop and fold this way, has really, you know, fairly solid applications. If you start looking at a 20-foot sea container, then 6 inches per building is 16 buildings per sea container with um, something like 64 cubic feet, um, not 64, 64-foot uh, 64, uh, 64 space, 8 feet high, uh, at the end of the container, which you could use for additional equipment. So I think you can talk about housing for somewhere in the order of 80 people per sea container, and then you have the sea container itself as a building that could be used as a communication center where you could lock valuable equipment, um, or maybe a medical unit. In any case, you have the box as well as the 80, um, you know, sort of 16 hexahertz that would come out of it. Um, and I think that's potentially a pretty good product. Um, I'm not exactly sure who would be the right people to develop something like that, but somebody out there watching this video might have an idea, so put me in touch with those people. Um, and again, everything is open intellectual property licensing, so anybody can build these, anybody can manufacture them, even commercial companies, especially commercial companies. Um, I think that, you know, some, you know, the, the sort of archetype that we use is the cardboard box manufacturer in China who wants to move into the housing business and will produce, you know, three million units in five years. So um, that's the goal state. You know, if you're out there, you know, working on the internet, somebody you know knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who could potentially be taking this open source design, packaging it into products and selling it. 